Okay, good morning, General. I want to make sure you can hear us and we can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, and Tom, if we could have just a tiny bit more volume out here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined this morning from Iraq by Army Lieutenant General Sean McFarland. General McFarland is the commander of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve, and he's been commander of the CJTF since October of last year. General, we'll turn it over to you for uh, opening remarks, and then we'll take uh, questions. Well, thanks, Jeff, and hello, everybody. And uh, just a minor correction, Jeff, I actually took command uh, at CJTF in September of last year, so I want to get full credit for my tour over here, okay? Um, anyway, I am the commander and will be for about another week and a half. As most of you know, the CJTF is the operational level headquarters that oversees the campaign against ISIL in Iraq and Syria. It's been seven months since the last time I did a press conference like this, but I've gotten to see a lot of you as you come through Iraq with our senior leaders. And since this is my last Pentagon press conference, I'd like to just make a few parting observations, and then I'll be glad to take your questions. So 11 months ago, on September 19th, the 3rd U.S. Armored Corps assumed the mission of leading Combined Joint Task Force OIR from the 3rd U.S. Army. The year prior, 3rd Army had stood up the CJTF headquarters in response to Daesh advances from Syria into Iraq. To their great credit, they were able to stop the enemy onslaught and even rolled it back in some areas. But Daesh still controlled the Euphrates River Valley from the Syrian-Turkish border almost to the edge of Baghdad, to include the recently fallen city of Ramadi. The enemy held all the major population centers in Nineveh province in the north and along the Tigris River Valley from Mosul down to the oil refinery town of Beji. Our Syrian opposition partners were hanging on along the Mara line by their fingertips in northwest Syria. The Kurds in both Iraq and Syria had ceased advancing. Many observers characterized the situation then as a stalemate. You don't hear the word stalemate anymore. That's because over the past year with our partners, we were able to seize the initiative. We now talk about maintaining the momentum of the campaign in both Iraq and Syria. In other words, we spend more time thinking about what we will do to the enemy than we spend thinking about what the enemy might do to us. But even success can beget problems, and we've heard concern from some quarters that the military campaign is moving too fast. Well, from my perspective, that is not a bad problem to have. Eleven months ago, there were questions about our strategy, the capacity and the will of our partners. When we took over the fight, we found the ISF, which had been trained primarily for counterinsurgency, unable to eject the enemy from Beji. In Anbar, the Iraqis were making frustratingly slow progress toward the outskirts of Ramadi. Some wondered whether we could defeat Daesh working by, with, and through our partners, or if we needed to take a more direct role. Still others questioned whether the Kurds would cooperate with Arab forces to fight Daesh beyond their own traditional region. Since then, all these questions have been answered, not by words, but by deeds. In some ways, the progress against Daesh in Iraq and Syria has been remarkable. Yes, we modified the type and level of support we provided over the course of the past year, but we have not fundamentally altered the paradigm of train and equip, advise and assist. And our approach is paying off. The enemy is in retreat on all fronts. The ISF proved that they can conduct complex and decisive operations. To seize the operationally important airfield of Kiara West, for example, the Iraqi army conducted an attack by the largest Iraqi armored force since 1990, although this time the M1 tanks and the coalition were on their side. The ISF also conducted the first opposed bridging operation by any Arab army since the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, for which the Kurds provided important cooperation and support. But the turning point in Operation Inherent Resolve in Iraq I think was the liberation of Ramadi, just as it was a turning point in 2006 during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Here, the Iraqi Counterterrorism Service and Iraqi Army, with our support, won a hard-fought victory. In the process, they broke the back of enemy resistance in Anbar province by inflicting massive casualties, cutting off Fallujah, dealing a huge blow to enemy morale, and proving to themselves that they were better than Daesh. 
To paraphrase Winston Churchill, the liberation of Ramadi was the end of the beginning of the campaign against Daesh. The beginning of the end will be the liberation of Mosul, Iraq's second largest city. Once it is recaptured, the enemy in Iraq will be reduced to scattered pockets of resistance, and that is now our focus. Ramadi also taught us important lessons about how to train and equip the ISF for urban combat, which will pay dividends as we prepare for the Battle of Mosul. We've shifted away from counterinsurgency towards combined arms maneuver training, teaching the Iraqis how to integrate infantry, armor, artillery, engineers, 